Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost and you're watching Provost Park Pass and today we're going to talk about how some people perceive Disney as being under attack. We'll get in all into it. I have to tell you exactly what happened and what brought up this video. But before we get to that, go you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell notification. I, we got a lot of more fun videos coming out. This video is going to be really deep. We're going to do some really heavy stuff here. But I got some fun videos coming out. We're going to do some hotel reviews. We got some cool trivia, Disney videos, some ways to save money. We're going to plan to go on vacation to Disney. So hit that subscribe button. All right, so let me tell you what happened. Yesterday, uh, Sunday, I went to my mom's and stepdad's house. We're having a nice little Sunday brunch, eating waffles with raspberries. And all of a sudden, out of blue, my mom's like, what is going on with Disney? And she's like, is Disney under attack? I'm hearing all these things. I don't understand it. And I was like, Wait, what are you talking about? And she's like, I hear about their, you know, they're trying to get rid of Bob Iger or the board. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're, okay. You're talking about a proxy fight. And then my mom says this. She's like, you need to go make a video and talk about this because I don't understand it. And I think there's a lot of other people don't understand it. So you have to do that. And so that's what I'm doing. When my mom tells me to do something, I do it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break down. This is a very complicated uh, thing that's going on with Disney right now on the board of directors. And so I'm going to do like kind of a light dusting, a high level overview of it. If you have more insight, go ahead and put it down in the comments down below. But there are some rules. I do ask this. Whenever I do videos like this, people seem to get mad at me personally. They think that I have control over this. I'm just, I'm just kind of reporting. I'm just a messenger. I, I, I just, re that's all I'm doing. All right. So I don't have an opinion one way or the other. I'm just telling you what's going on. All right. Let's get started. So in this video, we're going to break it kind of down. At first, I'm going to, it's going to do a building block approach. I'm going to teach you guys about what is a board of directors. And then we're talking about what is a proxy fight. And then we're talking about the players. And every morning you get on the news, more and more people are becoming involved in what's happening here with, uh, with Disney. First, we've got to start off. What is a board of directors? A board of directors is required by law if you are a publicly traded company. And being a publicly traded company, that means you have stocks on the stock market that people can buy. I can go out and buy it. You could go buy it for a company uh, like Coca-Cola. You go buy stock. That's a publicly traded company. Now, if a company is traded publicly, they have to have a board of directors. And the board of directors can have anywhere between uh, 8 and 21 members sitting on the board. Um, some companies prefer odd numbers in case there's like the need to break a tie. Disney, Disney personally right now has 12 board members and Disney has stated that they feel that their board is most effective when they have between nine and 12 board members sitting on the board helping to make decisions. So this, that's kind of what a board is. And, and you might be asking yourself, well, is who's more powerful, the CEO or the board of directors? The board of directors is really more powerful. So, the, I mean, like we know Bob Chapik, he got fired by the board of directors for Disney. They fired him. They got rid of him. They have the capability to do that. Now, really what the board of directors does is they sit there and manage. They kind of give guidance and advice to the CEO. The CEO is the one that's running the company. Ultimately, they're the ones that make the decisions on the company. And it, the buck stops with the CEO. If the if this company's doing well, the CEO gets the credit. When the company's not doing well... CEO's got to own that. And um, the board of directors has the capability, if they disagree with the CEO or they disagree with the way, direction that they're taking the company, they can get rid of the CEO. It's kind of like a checks and balances type of thing. And so that's the board of directors for um, uh, for uh, what a board of directors is. And Disney, they have 12, uh, board, uh, 12 people sitting on their board. Now, by law, you can only have, you have to have more people on the board that do not work for the company that then work for the company. So Disney at least has to have seven, because they have 12 board members, seven of them cannot work for Disney. They have to be outside of Disney. Uh, and that's just part of the law because you can't have just all internal people because then it gets kind of skewed. You need people outside kind of looking at it from a clear objective saying, okay, this is what's going on. We need to be doing these things. And they kind of help come up with a, with a, um, what the company should be doing for the next year. They come up with their goals. They, they come up with the compensation for like the C-suite, like the executives, and they come up with that. Uh, they can fire other executives. That's kind of really what the board of directors does. 
Usually, board of directors, they kind of recruit other CEOs or CFOs. CEO stands for Chief Executive Officer. That's what Bob Iger is. Or a CFO, Chief Financial Officer. And they usually kind of like look at other companies and say, hey, come be our board of director here. And uh, they can get compensated for doing that. And so they, they, and they, they can only, there's rules. You can only be on so many boards, like I think like three or six a year or something like that of different companies. So if I'm actively working at a company, a CFO, I can only be on three boards outside of my company. If I'm retired, I'm retired like CFO, then I could be on six boards for that year. Anyways, Disney has their 12 board members. So now we've kind of talked a little bit about what it is to be, a, what a board a director, a board of directors is. Um, it's a checks and balances for the CEO. Now, how do you get elected? How do you get invited to become on the board of directors? This is an important part of this story. Well, they usually will, the other board members will say, we really want this guy here and they'll bring him in and, and uh, kind of nominate him. And then uh, you get a vote on him. If you own stock, you can vote for that particular person. And a lot of times it's kind of a slam dunk. The, the board of directors comes in and they're like, we want this person. We want him or her to come in and they have enough influence, enough stock that they're going to vote him. And it's kind of they, that person becomes part of the board. And so it's done through an election. This is an election process to get on board. And I keep this in mind. It's kind of high level. I know it gets a little more complicated than that, but it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of how this works. So now what is happening with Disney? Disney is having going through a thing called a proxy fight. And it's not a hostile takeover. Hostile takeover and a proxy fight are two different things. And I hear other YouTubers kind of talk about the situation. They're like, Disney's going through a hostile takeover. That's not correct. A hostile takeover is we have a company here and this company overtakes this company without this company's permission. Like this is a larger company. It's a small company. This company comes in and buys up all the stocks. So they have majority. And they're like, also they're like, we are now your boss. And a lot of times companies will do that. And they'll just disband this company because maybe it's, maybe they're, maybe it's like a, uh, a competitor or they want this. And that's called the hostile takeover. This company has no say in it. They just got bought out by a larger company and that's a hostile takeover. That is not what is going on with Disney. Be absolutely clear. It's not a hostile takeover. This is called a proxy fight, okay? Sometimes it's called a proxy contest and sometimes it's called a proxy battle. But what it is, is if a person, they disagree with, the, with what's going on with the company, uh, the board, and they can say, hey, I need to be on that board or we need to put somebody else on the board. And if you can get enough votes, enough shareholders to vote you in, you can go in and take over on and get uh, be put in on the board. It's called a proxy contest or proxy battle. And that's what's, ha that's what's happened to Disney within the last year and is currently happening again. Now, so what we did is we introduced what is the board of directors. I introduced you to like the concept of what is a proxy battle or proxy contest. And now we have to introduce you to the players. And every day there's new players and it gets more and more complicated. And I, I'm just keep in mind, I am trying to be unbiased as possible. I don't, I, I, I'm not trying to side with one person or the other because some of these people I'm going to talk about are very polarizing. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into the players. The first player we need to get into is Nelson Peltz. And it's, it's P-E-L-T-Z. And Nelson is an interesting guy. Um, he was going to school. He actually dropped out of school and wanted to become a ski instructor in Oregon. His dad, his grandpa had his, this frozen fruit company. His dad was running it. His dad told him, hey, come back and work for us. He became like a truck driver for him, delivering frozen food. He and his brother, and his dad was, was kind of an open-minded guy. He told his, uh, the two sons, like, let's see how far you can take his company. And Nelson was able to take this company and he took it public and he sold it for like $150 million. And, and he really grew the company, a really smart business guy. And eventually uh, 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 sold the company. After a while, the company started floundering and they went back to him. They're like, we got all this debt. And he's like, ah, fine, I'll take it. He went back and ended up erasing all the debt within one year. He's a really, really business-minded guy, right? And he ended up starting a thing called Train, uh, Train Fund Management. And, and, and just to go back on, on Nelson, he's been part of like Wendy's and like Pepsi and all these things. And Train Fund Management is an interesting company. And what it is, is it's these companies, they look around on Wall Street and they're like, this company is behaving weird. We don't like the way, what they're doing. And so they'll kind of forcibly, through a proxy, get, a, get somebody from Train on that board and help them to correct course correct for that company. And they did it for like Wendy's, Pepsi, uh, let's see, well, let me look at it, uh, DuPont, Family, Family Dollar, Procter & Gamble, Craft Food, Cadbury, uh, Heinz, 
Um, these are companies that they got in and they did this proxy thing and they've helped course correct these companies. And that's what Nelson uh, Peltz kind of does. That's, that's what he does. And he's very good at it. Well, what happened? Bob Chapik, you remember Bob Chapik? He got fired, right? Bob Chapik got fired by the board of directors. And but then Bob Iger was put back in. And this was in November of last year. Well, he was put back in. And what happened is then in January of this year, January 2023, January 11th to be specific, uh, Pelt, he actually announced, and said, hey, I'm going to try to do this po uh, proxy fight and I want to have a board. I want to have a chair on the board of directors for Disney. And he labeled his whole campaign called Restore the Magic. And what he did, he literally did a PowerPoint presentation and he says these are the things that he was very concerned about. He said Disney needs to cut costs. Uh, he says they need to bring back its dividends because they, uh, Disney took away their stock dividends. It'll talk about that in a moment. And uh, it says that it needs to get their cash flow back on track and that Disney was over earning at its theme parks and gouging guests and not investing enough. And that was his big thing, okay? And he, he says, we got to restore the magic. And those are his points. And what ended up happening on January 7th, Disney opposed this election saying, and they did this in the uh, direct all capital letters. They filed this to the SEC. It says, Peltz does not understand Disney's business and lacks the skill and experience to assist the board. And so they ended up, um, they, they, they filed a motion with the SEC. That's the Security and Exchange uh, um, commission. They oversee like Wall Street. And they said, hey, this guy, he's trying to come and do a proxy fight, but he, he's literally not, it wouldn't be a good fit for us. Now, here's a little side note. This is just a little side note, right? I think this is really interesting. So Disney's like, this guy doesn't understand anything. But in the last year, what did Disney do? They literally did everything that Peltz said they should do, right? They, um, they, they cut their 7.5 billion in costs. They did lay off some employees. They laid off like thousands of employees. They brought back their dividend on stock. So we'll talk about that in a moment. And they try and free up cash flow. And then they said they're going to be investing more money, $60 billion in parks. Almost everything that, that Pelt said that Disney should do is what Disney did in the last year. So I think that just, that's interesting to me. I don't, I'm not weighing on that one way or the other. Now, what is it as a Disney stock, a dividend on a stock? When you buy a stock... Um, some companies offer dividends, some offer cash dividends, some offer stock dividends. And what it is, is basically it's rewarding you for holding that stock and not selling it. If you hold that stock for like a year, then all of a sudden, like maybe they'll give you like a 5% dividend. So if you have like a hundred shares, they'll give you five new shares at the end of the year. Say, congratulations, here's five more shares for you. Some companies like to do that. Other companies are worried about diluting, keeping having more stocks. So instead of what they'll do, instead of giving you stocks, five new stocks, they'll give you 5% of what it was worth and say, here's, here's some money and you can reinvest that in to buy more stocks if you want to. So Disney used to have dividends, but when uh, COVID hit, they got rid of all their dividends of stocks and they, they were keeping that. They were keeping all that in, for themselves to help them. And then uh, 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 Pelt says, you got to bring back the dividends. And they did. They just recently brought back the dividends. So I think that's interesting. Anyways, um, in February 9th of this year, uh, Peltz drops his his uh, his his proxy fights. Okay, I'm not going to do it. And uh, that's it. Then on October 8th of this year, Peltz came back and he actually went to Disney and asked. He's like, hey, I need, I do need a seat on the board. I'm concerned. We The change hasn't happened fast enough. What's going on? I need a seat on the board. Well, Disney um, came back and like, no, that's not going to happen. So on November 30th of this year, just about what, two weeks ago, Peltz announced that he is going to do another proxy fight again. And this time he's not just asking for one seat, he's asking for up to three seats on the board. And it's different. So now we, now we know who Nelson uh, Peltz is. So that's the one player. Now we've got to start introducing new players, and this game is going to keep evolving and changing and changing and changing as we go along. We need to introduce to you Isaac Perlmutter, okay? And he's known as Ike. I'm going to call him Ike. And, and this guy is really, really interesting, right? This guy, um, Perlmutter was the uh, chairman of Marvel. He was the one that made when Marvel was sold to Disney as part of this whole thing. Now, he and Bob Iger apparently don't get along very well. And he even and, and uh, Ike even has a hard time sometimes with Kevin Feige. And um, this last year, 
He was terminated. They let him go. It kind of like they just let him go. It was kind of unceremoniously. They just let him go. And he was gone and let go. Um, Ike was let go. Now, this is important because he has a lot of shares in Disney. Like a lot, a lot of shares in Disney. So he was let go. And guess what? <laughs> uh, Isaac, Ike and uh, Nelson, um, they're friends. And Ike went to Nelson and said, you know what? I'm going to give you, he had 30 million voting shares. These are where you can vote on who you want to be in the board. He's like, I will give you these 30 million shares. Not that like he doesn't get to like cash them in, but I'll give you my voting privileges on my shares. So 30 million votes is going to go to, uh, to uh, Nelson Peltz, okay? And he says, go get a board. Go get a seat on the board. And so he literally gave all these shares, which makes it huge because uh, – uh, Nelson Peltz had a lot of shares, but now all of a sudden he was, has a massive infusion of voting power. And so now he's demanding three seats. Now, there is some controversy to this because um, some people are saying, well, you know, you can't have this, this uh, you can't have this uh, uh, Ike Perlmutter because he's got a vendetta against Bob Iger. And Perlmutter's like, no, 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 I, I don't, I don't. But he kind of does a little bit. They they don't see eye to eye. They just, they don't see. And so uh, and I'm I'm going to say I'm going to read you some quotes that um, Ike Promoter says. Okay, these are direct quotes he just said uh, in the last couple of weeks. As someone with a large economic interest in Disney success, I can no longer watch the business underachieve its great potential. All they talk about, all they uh, so uh, all they talk about is box office, box office, box office. Um, it was reported that he's lost confidence in CEO Bob Iger's ability to write the ship at Disney. I care about the bottom line. I don't care about how big the box office is. Only people in Hollywood care about the box office. So this is uh, Pearl Mutter's uh, talking about how he's lost confidence in Bob Iger. And he's like saying that all they talk about is box office, box office. They don't talk about, you know, the quality anymore. And he's very concerned about this. So he gave these shares um, gave these shares, these voting shares to uh, Nelson Peltz so that he can actually have more of a chance of, sw of the swing the vote so that he can get elected onto the board. Uh, so that's a new player, right? We got, uh, we got Ike Perlmutter. Now, before I introduce the next player, again, some of these people are very polarizing and just be aware, I'm just telling you what's going on. I have, I'm not choosing sides, so don't attack me. People, I don't know why they do that. They just do that. And also just kind of be aware that this, this next little, this next little section, this is more, uh, this is more grown up type talk. Just be aware of, for, this isn't really for little ones. Okay. Elon Musk, he gets introduced into this whole situation as well. So Elon Musk is, for those of you who don't know, I mean, every, I think most people know who least Elon Musk is. He's a, he's a disruptor, right? He, he's an outside the box thinker. He does Tesla, SpaceX, and X, which is now it was Twitter, which is now X. And he um, seems to have now have taken Bob Iger and put him squarely in his crosshairs. He obviously does not like him. And they are, he's really upset. And, and Elon Musk is very public. And this cannot come as a worse time for Bob Iger. Bob Iger is now trying to fend off a proxy fight for his board. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean that Bob Iger is going to get fired. If, if Nelson Peltz gets on the board, doesn't mean they're going to fire Bob Iger. But Nelson is going to have a lot of influence on what the company does by being on there. So, at the, so Bob Iger is trying to fend off that, and then all of a sudden Elon Musk comes on the stage, and this is a big deal because Elon Musk is very public. And what it's really doing is kind of eroding some of the credibility that Bob Iger has. So it's probably the last thing that Bob Iger wants. So what happened is, and I'm going to kind of read some of these things here. Just keep in mind, I'm going to kind of uh, Elon Musk just he just you know he he just speaks from the cuff, he speaks right off the heart. So some of the things he says are just man, I can't really I don't want to I don't repeat them directly. So. Um, Here's what happened is Elon Musk, apparently what happened is that Disney, Apple, Coca-Cola, Warner Brothers, and Comcast, they have suspended their advertising on X um, after Musk shared a post which came across to many as anti-Semitic, all right? And uh, when, they, when they asked him about, when they asked Elon Musk about this, they're like, hey, you know, they're no longer going to advertise on X. How do you feel about this? And then he said this vocally. He says, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money. Go bleep yourself. Go bleep yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. And then he said this. He says, um, hey, Bob, 
if you're in the audience, that's how I feel. Now, who who's Bob? We're, he's got to be talking to Bob Iger right there because we're talking about Disney pulling their advertisers right there. And then it shows that um, Elon Musk is he's just he's not letting it go. He came out and says that uh, um, Disney says that Bob Iger should be fired immediately, right? Then this happens. The state of New Mexico, okay, New Mexico, the state of New Mexico, one of the 50 states, is they're suing Mark uh, Meta and Mark Zuckerberg, okay, for alleged child abuse content on their sites. And, um, and on Facebook and Instagram, they have things that are not appropriate and it's, it's causing some abuse in children and trafficking. And the state of New Mexico is actually filing a lawsuit about this and saying, hey, you gotta, you gotta protect the children. Well, Musk then says uh, this, it's crazy that Disney has to be sued to stop this terrible behavior. And I don't know what that, that's a weird, I don't know what he said that, but then he says this, um, why no advertiser boycott Bob Iger? Are you endorsing this type of material? And he says, Bob Iger thinks it's cool to advertise next to child exploitation material, real stand-up guy. So what Elon Musk is doing there, let me just be clear what's going on. Disney says they're not going to advertise at X anymore because of things that Elon Musk says. But then the state of New Mexico is suing like Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, Instagram, Facebook, because they have some things in there that are not good for children. And he says, oh, yeah, but, oh, Disney's still still doing this. They're still advertising there. They have no problem advertising there. And so he's just kind of calling him out. That's what he's saying there. And, and, it's, and it's, this is it's, this is just what Bob Iger does not want right now. He's now he's going to have to. He doesn't, Bob Iger typically doesn't like to get mired down in these things, and he usually just kind of goes off of it. But Elon Musk is he's a power player, right? He's he's one of those guys that has enough influence that when he says something, people kind of take notice to that. But now we've got to introduce more players. We've got to introduce this guy named Bill Ackman. And Bill Ackman is a billionaire hedge fund manager. And he's a founder and chief uh, officer of Perishing Square Capital Management. And Bill Ackman um, said this, If Bob Iger would carefully examine the facts, he would likely continue to advertise on X. But Disney caves to public pressure rather than do the right thing. Meanwhile, Disney invests heavily in TikTok, lightly alongside videos of kids teaching other teenagers to be anorexic or worse. So this guy comes in, Bill Ackerman, and he's, he takes a shot at it. He's like, this is what's going on. Now we have to introduce you to another person, Jason Antib Antibi, and he's the chief investment officer of Blackwell's Capital. And he ends up saying he's actually going out. He swings the opposite direction of Bill. And he says this. He like says mindless drum beating activism is not the right strategy for shareholders. And, um, and then he says Disney's board is acting in the best interest of all its shareholders and should be allowed time to focus on driving value at one of America's most iconic companies without this uh, fatidious sideshow. So. People, are, it's getting all over the place. And, and what's happening is in media, people are talking about this. What does this all mean? Let me break it down very simply. Here we go. Board of directors for Disney has 12 members, 12 people sit on the board. Nelson Peltz wants, he wants to sit at the board. He doesn't feel that Disney is doing the best job and he feels that he should be on the board. He has a person, Ike uh, Perlmutter, he's given him some voting shares. That's giving him a lot of power to get on there. So a lot of people you might be hearing say it's got a hostile takeover. That's not crazy. This is a proxy fight just to get on to the board of directors. And, and Nelson wants to sit there. That's what his company does. They get on these board directors and they help course correct companies. He feels that he should be there. Now, while all this is going on, Bob Iger is getting annihilated and attacked by Elon Musk and these other people, these other hedge fund managers are all kind of piling on and other people are trying to defend him. It's going on. This is kind of eroding a little bit of Bob Iger's. He has this kind of charisma glow of what's going on and kind of his credibility is being taken apart right now. We're going to have to see at the annual shareholders meeting, there will be a vote. And if Nelson gets enough people to vote for him, he will have a seat on the board. That is what is going on right now. In just simplest terms, there's one man who's trying to sit at the board of Disney, and he's not been invited to sit on the board. He's trying to force his way onto the board through votes, by, by votes. And that's what's going on. It's called a proxy fight or proxy battle. I hope that makes sense of what's going on. My mom was super confused by this, and she's like, I need to know what's going on. So I, I hope that makes sense to you. It is a very complicated situation, and I think the press love to talk about it. They love to spin it up. Now, 
I would love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and put it down in the comments down below. And keep in mind, please be respectful. If somebody has a different point of view than you, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's really actually healthy. If everybody always thought exactly the same, that's not good. So we like it when people have different points of view because we can kind of educate ourselves. But do be respectful to other people and, and, and when you put that in comments. I would like to hear your thoughts. There are people out there who have experience in business and, and Wall Street and uh, working on boards. And tell me what you think is going to happen here. Is, 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 uh, is Nelson, is he just, is it all bluster? Is he just saying this and then he's going to back away? Or is he really trying to get on the board? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. I hope that this was uh, somewhat uh, educational for you guys. Hit the subscribe button. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.